In this video, I wanted to show you uh, the um, the user interface, or actually, you know, several parts of the user interface of the uh, the SP invoice solution uh, that I'm currently building as part of a, a USP journal issue. Um, and and um, sort of one of my pet peeves about uh, SharePoint solutions is that, well, at least the out of the box ones, that they're they're not really intuitive in terms of you know what what happens and how are users supposed to use them. If you if you uh, go into any site and by the way, this is a plain SharePoint site. I've, I've just created it. There's, there's nothing activated or, or set up in any way. Uh, I've only installed the, the SP invoice uh, solution. And then this is also, by the way, the, the development version. So it might vary slightly from, from the one that you, you get in the, um, the journal issue. But if you look at you know how these features work in in, in SharePoint, you have uh, and obviously this list varies by, by what version you have in, in of SharePoint, and whether you have the, the server one or the the um, the foundation one. Uh, but if you look at sort of these out of the box features that are available here, we have the report server file sync, uh, and and there's a feature and you're supposed to activate it and something is going to happen. Uh, the problem obviously being that once once you activate it, the only thing that actually changes is that now you have a blue label here and then you know the button says deactivate instead there there's no you know what what's the user supposed to do now um, and even if you sort of you if you activate something like the group works list which is actually a, a um, you know somewhat cool feature the only thing that happens is that well again the button just says activate uh, and then you get the list here and then what you actually need to do is you need to go into the calendar and you need to enable you know that this calendar is going to be used but that all, all it sort of um, assumes that the user know what they're doing prior to actually activating a feature and then I think that's sort of just a, a bad user experience so uh, if you look at what happens when I activate the, the SPC invoice uh, or SP invoice setup uh, what happens is that rather than just you know clicking activate and you know the button says saying uh, deactivate, uh, we actually take the users directly to a setup screen that explains to them what they they need to do. Uh, and in this case, uh, you can basically just you know pause the video and read the text. But basically, it's just a brief guidance on on you know uh, what to do here. Uh, and we ask the user for the information that they need to set up the solution. In this case, it's going to be uh, you know the company name. Let's call that uh, Acme Corp, uh, like that. And that's going to be uh, located in 123 Sun Street. Um, and that's obviously going to be in um, some town of California, uh, like that. We're asking for some due dates as well. I'll explain in, in the, the issue uh, how these actually work. But let's say we have a default due dates for our invoices for of 12 days, and we have you know a default tax rate, which is going to be 5%. We'll just save this now. So uh, basically, uh, that sort of you know it, it tells the user what to do once they they actually want to 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 uh, utilize your solution. The other thing that uh, I think uh, you know SharePoint solutions should utilize more is to actually create interfaces for what the user is doing. Uh, and again, it's the same thing. It's, it's just part of the, the user experience, you know, guiding people to what they're supposed to do. So so if you go into the invoices list, this is actually, you know, explained on that, uh, that uh, initial screen that you saw earlier. Uh, if you go into the invoices now and you add a new item, you get sort of standard SharePoint, um, you know, setup for, for creating an invoice. Uh, well, let's say that this is a, a you know, SharePoint design project uh, like that. Uh, and this is uh, like this, come on, like that. And this is going to be built to the mom and pop shop, uh, like that, which is actually located in 456 uh, uh, Main Street, um, like that. And that's obviously going to be in other town and also in California, just to make it DC. Uh, we have, and you can see, by the way, these default due dates uh, that they're sort of taken from that, uh, that form that we had earlier. We can have you know some some uh, payment terms here saying that you know payment due in 12 days something like that or our PayPal account something that we want to add there we will and, and in this case you know they, they want a hard copy of their design on the CD so let's add a, a, a you know ten dollars shipping cost on, on that just um, you know just want to show you how that looks so so this is basically the default SharePoint user interface but it doesn't actually you know encourage the user to to understand what they're doing it's, it's perfectly nice if you're just working with data and the users understand how they're working with data but what I would like to to see developers do far more is actually uh, you know create interfaces that mimic what the user is actually doing so in this case we're actually modifying a, a an invoice right so if you open this now in a different tab what you'll see is that the interface here 
actually looks like an invoice, right? And it doesn't, you know, there's there's nothing that resembles SharePoint here at all. Uh, but it's it's a far more intuitive user interface for for um, users, probably at least I will I assume it's going to be. And this this invoice, by the way, is a plain HTML template that I found online, and then I've just converted it to make it into a, a SharePoint template. As far as I know, it's in, you know free and open source available. The the point still here is still that this is actually taken from from just any regular you know SharePoint um, or or HTML page, uh, and it's now actually a, a SharePoint application. So what you can see here is that well, all of these fields here they're they're editable. You can you know click here and you say that this is well we actually need to specify that this is going to be in the United States. Uh, actually, let me just show you a couple of other things first. Uh, I'm not going to to change that. First of all, uh, let's see for that we we're actually pulling data from that um, invoice item that we we created earlier and we're adding this here. So you see the shipping cost here, you see the tax rate, and all of this is you know uh, automatically updated. And also, uh, just, you know, in invoices, you have rows of, of items that people are buying. So in this case, let's say that we want to add a new row to our, our invoice. And this is going to be, you know, we have some internal uh, product number. It's going to be 100. That's our consulting hours, something like that. And this is going to be the master page sign uh, like this. And we're going to charge, you know, $150 per hour. And that took us three hours to do, right? So once we actually do that now, uh, we're actually posting this back into SharePoint so that it's, it's actually stored in SharePoint. Uh, we, if we actually now, you can see, first of all, that the, the, the dues and, and sums and everything like that, it updates, you know, like it's supposed to do. Uh, if you refresh the page, it's actually, you know, retaining this information. We can close this and we can come back to it at a later time. We'll just open it again. We can make changes here, and you know, all of this just goes back into SharePoint. We can add new rows, uh, and then you know, let's uh, again do uh, 101, which is going to be our, our you know, um, uh, page layouts, and um, we're going to you know, that's going to be also $150. Going to be two of them. Now, once we've actually just you know completed our rows, they're stored automatically back to SharePoint, and everything this is done using you know jQuery and SP services stuff like that. So everything is open. It's, uh, it's um, you know, it works as a SharePoint application. You don't need to, to, to you know, have any special stuff happening in order to make this, these kinds of behavior work. Um, and the other thing is, by the way, if, if you now just, you know, click print, uh, we want to print this out. Obviously, you can't see my printer, so let me print to one of these XPS document writer ones. Uh, what you'll actually see is that, um, uh, it opens in the background here, we'll store this on the desktop, we'll call it uh, invoice. Uh, like that. Uh, you'll notice that obviously in an invoice that you send to a client, you don't want to have these add rows, you don't want these buttons to remove rows, etc. Uh, so, so if you just, you know, go back to our desktop now and try to open this one, you'll see that it actually uses a, well actually this one for some reason didn't go away, but the, the add row uh, went away and this one went away as well. I'm not sure why that's uh, not in, 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 uh, in the, you know, uh, HTML and CSS guru. Let me see, check the, the page. Uh, I think there's something called a page preview or something. Uh, otherwise, uh, as I said, uh, I'll um, um, look at this as, uh, yeah, there, there's some, some issue here with that, uh, that button. I'll, I'll, I'll need to check that out in the in the production version, as I said, this is the development version that I've been using. So, but, but my point is still less that that this is still that this is a, a much more intuitive interface for users to to work with. They they don't need to you know learn anything particular about the data model or anything like that. They can actually just keep working on on the the um, um, you know they they get an environment that mimics what they are actually trying to produce and and this could you know be any kind of thing it could be a project report you can have you know some fancy uh, responsive design stuff like that to make make basically make it a mobile application as well it doesn't really matter how you you do it but it's still a, a sharepoint application uh, and it works with sharepoint and has all the benefits of, of having sharepoint and obviously um the rest of the, the the sharepoint site itself works exactly as before you know you have all the other uh, stuff like invoices and now the, the phone call memos etc so so um that's um, that's basically so so that's what i wanted to show you as i said sharepoint can have really nice user experiences and i think that sharepoint solutions need to to um uh, utilize that far more to create better user experiences and, and I'll, I'll show you some of the, the things and or actually most of the things that I've done to make this happen and I'll show you that in the, the SP invoice um, solution of USB journal.
So thank you for taking the time to, to watch this video and I hope you, you enjoyed it.